Hello and thank you for watching 2carpros.com. In this video we are going to show you how to do a brake pads and rotor replacement on a 2007 to 2013 BMW M3. First, let's suspend the front end with the e-brake on. Then remove the lug nuts and the front wheel. Turning the brake rotor can help you when doing this repair. Our next step is to remove the brake caliper retainer clip shown here. Next, remove the two caliper slide pin covers. Using the appropriate size metric Allen wrench, remove the two caliper slide bolts. Our next step is to remove the brake pad sensor. It is prone that the sensor will break. We will be replacing the sensor later on in this video. Using a standard screwdriver, wedge the screwdriver in between the caliper mounting bracket and the brake caliper, applying pressure allowing you to remove the brake caliper from the brake assembly. Our next step is to find a spot to place the brake caliper. We like to use a pair of zip ties to suspend the brake caliper out of the way. Our next step is to remove the two caliper mounting bracket bolts using the appropriate size metric socket wrench. Remove the caliper mounting bracket bolts from the brake assembly. Using an impact screwdriver with the appropriate size metric Allen wrench attachment, loosen the two Allen heads holding the rotor to the car. Remove the two Allen head bolts from the brake rotor. On this step, we like to use a pair of safety goggles. Use a hammer, striking the rotor face, shocking the rotor into loosening. We like to compare our old brake rotors with our new brake rotors to be sure a proper install. On this BMW M3, there are two sets of front brake rotors, left and right. Be sure to have the right side on the correct side. Replace the new brake rotor to the car. Line up the metal dowels to the holes on the brake rotor. Replace and tighten the two Allen head screws that hold the brake rotor to the brake assembly.
Our next step is to tighten the Allen head screws that hold the brake rotor to the brake assembly using the appropriate size metric Allen wrench. If you're not comfortable with tightening the brake rotor this way, you can also use the impact screwdriver to tighten the Allen heads. Using brake or carb cleaner, clean the surface in which the brake pads will be mating to the rotor. Before installing our brake pads, we like to compare our old brake pads to our new brake pads to be sure a proper install. Our next step is to clean the slides on the caliper mounting bracket in which the brake pads will be riding on. We like to use breaker carb cleaner, a wire brush, and an old shop towel to clean the surface that the brake pads will be riding on. Our next step is to return the caliper mounting bracket to the car. Then, replace and tighten the two bolts that hold the caliper mounting bracket to the assembly. Using a pair of channel locks and an old brake pad, or a brake caliper compression tool, compress the piston back into the caliper. After compressing the piston, remove the two brake pads from the brake assembly. After removing the two brake pads, install the new brake pads to the brake assembly. The brake pad with the metal tang goes inside the piston. With the one without the metal tang, goes to the outside. Cut the zip tie holding the brake caliper and replace the brake caliper to the brake assembly. Replace the two caliper slide pins. Our next step is to tighten the two caliper slide pins using the appropriate size metric Allen wrench. Replace the two caliper slide pin covers. Our next step is to remove the old brake pad sensor. Unplug the brake sensor from the car's wiring harness. We like to compare our old brake pad sensor to our new brake pad sensor to be sure a proper install. Plug in the new sensor 
to the car's wiring harness, and then run the line down to the brake caliper. Install the sensor to the inner brake pad. Install the retainer clip back onto the brake assembly. Our last couple of steps is to install the wheel back onto the car, then hand tighten the lug nuts to avoid cross threading, and then tighten the lug nuts in a cross pattern formation. After finishing your repair, you will need to press down on the brake pad slowly, then release the brake pad slowly, repeating this process until you find what is called brake pressure. Then the vehicle is safe to drive. Please click our subscribe button and like us on Facebook. Thank you for watching 2carpros.com.